Okay, hello and welcome everyone. So in this example, I'm gonna walk through a, well, a Bertrand pricing. I'm gonna walk through a monopoly profit maximization. And then I'm gonna think about what happens with innovation, if we're gonna get a large or small innovation, going from a market that's originally somewhat competitive to a situation where there's monopoly power, can be interested in is this a situation where the monopoly is going to be able to price as a single price monopolist okay so Rippin good cookies is based in Rippin Wisconsin also claims to be birthplace birthplace of the Republican Party so you drive into Rippin Wisconsin and you see that kind of these two things Rippin good cookies and then on their sign so uh, as of January 2013 Girl Scouts of Wisconsin Southeast became a main competitor after adopting a direct sales model a door-to-door -door model uh, my niece is a Girl Scout with an entrepreneurial spirit. If initially the market demand is described by price is equal to 420 minus one third Q and all sellers have the same unit cost, C naught, find the price each sets as Bertrand firms, assuming identical products Bertrand. And I've got another video talking about identical products Bertrand. Uh, suppose, or if Girl Scouts invests in research and development and drives costs down to 70, this becomes my niece's costs. Find her new monopoly price and quantity. For which values of C naught is this a major innovation? Like, so, so, so how low does the cost have to fall for this to be a large innovation? If C naught is equal to 220, what is my niece's actual price if she has costs of uh, C of 70? Oh, actually, so let me clarify this C naught this is only driving down Girl Scouts costs. We're going to assume Rippin's, Rippin Good Cookies costs stay at whatever was C0. So I should actually say C1 here. Um, and if my niece leverages her knowledge of the neighborhood for first degree price discrimination, what is her optimal pricing quantity? Okay, so the market was uh, 420 minus one third Q. So competing as Bertrand firms with everybody having costs of C0, this involves setting price equal to C0, right? Identical. Products Bertrand assumes we're going to set price equal to marginal cost and you can't gain by deviating. It actually, as long as you have at least two firms, it doesn't matter what anybody else does. So then the Nash equilibrium for Bertrand identical pricing is two firms setting price equal to marginal cost. You have to have two firms because if only one firm was setting price equal to marginal cost, that firm could raise its price up to just below whatever anybody else is pricing and, and then be better off. If you have more than two firms, as long as you have two that are setting price equal to marginal cost, everybody else is gonna get zero profit no matter what they do, as are the two currently setting price equal to marginal cost, and they would not have a unilateral deviation, so that would be a Nash equilibrium. Okay, so suppose Girl Scouts, and therefore my niece, has a, price, has a cost of 70. What's gonna be their profit maximizing quantity and price? Well, here's a monopoly profit maximization, or here's our profit maximization. It's going to be uh, price times quantity minus cost times quantity. So here is my inverse demand for 420 minus one third Q times Q minus 70 Q. So just cleaning or distributing the Q, 420 Q minus one third Q squared minus 70 Q. Differentiating with respect to quantity gives us 420 minus two thirds Q minus 70 is equal to Q. And as you're realizing, this here is marginal revenue. And you might have taken a shortcut. You might have said, oh, wow. Well, if this is the market demand, I know marginal revenue has the same intercept, 420, and then twice the slope, 2 thirds. Why? Because of this differentiation. This 2 is always going to give us, we're always going to have that 2 there. And the derivative is always going to give us 2 times whatever is that slope. Okay, and then just cleaning this up, we get 350 is equal to 2 thirds Q, or 525 is our monopoly quantity. What's gonna be our monopoly price? Well, the monopoly price would be 420 minus 1 third, 525 is just 245. Okay, so we wanna know, so this would be like the ideal situation as a single price monopolist, this would be what they would price. In order to know if they're gonna be able to do that, remember this started off as a competition between Rippin' Good Cookies and Girl Scout Cookies, and we gotta figure out, are they gonna are they going to be able to capture the market or not? Well, it depends, have we got a major innovation or a minor innovation? To get a major innovation, you need to, you need to have the initial cost that everybody else has, C naught, being something larger than 245. It's gotta be the case that we can undercut our rival as a single price monopolist for it to be a major innovation. 
Otherwise, if we can only, if we can undercut, if the monopoly price would be higher than C0, yeah, you'd still be a monopolist, but you wouldn't be able to price as a monopoly. You'd have to price just below their price or the, just below the uh, rival's costs. So let's do that in part D. Suppose C0 was initially 220, then my niece cannot actually exert single price monopoly pricing if her costs are 70 because 240 is bigger than 220. So what do they do? Well, she would set price equal to 220 minus epsilon to capture the market. She'd be a monopolist. She wouldn't have standard monopoly profits, but would still capture the market as a monopolist in the sense of being the only one serving the market and would have positive economic profits. And then the last one is saying, well, what would we get with first degree price discrimination? Well, this involves setting the same quantity as the competitive market would, but setting it, selling at individualized prices, right? With first degree price discrimination, everybody gets their own individual price. And I motivated this saying, well, suppose she leveraged her knowledge, <clears throat> excuse me, suppose she leveraged her knowledge of the neighborhood to give everybody their own price. Okay, well, we have to find the competitive quantity that's gonna be 420 minus 1 3rd Q, it's equal to 70, or 350 is equal to 1 3rd Q, or 1050. So we'll produce an output of 1050, and then what are prices gonna be? Well, prices are gonna range from marginal cost of 70 all the way up to all the way up to 420 which is the maximal willingness to pay in this market and everybody along that demand curve is going to get a different price with 70 being the price going to the person buying unit 1050 right? that would be first degree price discrimination and if you'd actually draw the picture you'd see this would be a situation where the entire value added the entire economic surplus the area under the demand curve and above the cost curve would be producer surplus not consumer surplus we'd produce the monopoly quantity or the competitive quantity, but we'd, ex we'd fully extract surplus using this pricing strategy. So, uh, okay, so we'll go ahead and conclude here.